Welcome to Profit and Prosper, a podcast for entrepreneurs who are ready to make some money while doing what they love. On this podcast, we're going to pull back the curtain and talk about all things business and money, but I promise you this is not your typical boring numbers talk. I'm your host, Sarah Young, a CPA and CFO with over a decade of experience in finance, business, and leadership. I'm going to share everything I've learned from helping my clients grow more profitable businesses and keep more of what they earn while growing my own successful business along the way. You'll feel empowered and confident that you too can grow your wealth, live a rich life, and have an impact. Stick with me and you might even start to think that finance is fun. Let's dive in. Welcome to this week's episode of the Profit and Prosper podcast. I'm so excited for you to listen to this week's episode because I am interviewing one of my clients and friends, Kenzie Harkey of Simply Dare. One of my goals for the podcast when I started it was to talk to business owners, real life business owners, about what it took to start and run their business and talking about how they got past all the roadblocks that they have encountered along the way with a twist on, of course, finances. So in this week's episode with Kinsey, we talked about how she grew her business, Simply Dare, over the last couple of years and how she has gotten out of the stages of feeling stressed out and burned out in her business and has begun to create more space for her to do even bigger and better things in her business. I'm so excited for you to listen to Kenzie's story on the podcast. And real quick, I do want to put it out there. My group program, my 12 week profit and prosper program is open now. This was the program that Kinsey did last year with me, and I think you will hear her say in the episode the things that we worked on and some of the things that were really instrumental in her business. So if you are listening to this and you are ready to add $10,000 to your bottom line in Q2 by managing your money like the successful, savvy CEO that I know you are then come and join my program. The doors are open until April 11th when we kick off the next cohort. You can go learn more at profitandprosper.co forward slash join now. And the easiest, fastest way if you have questions about the program is to DM me on Instagram and I will reply back probably with a voice memo. So go DM me at Youngco CFO on Instagram and I will answer whatever questions that you have. All right. Now let's jump into the episode. I'm so excited to have Kenzie Harkey of Simply Dare on this week. We are going to talk about just all things business and finance and what it is like behind the scenes. So Kenzie, thank you so much for being one of my first ever guests. Thank you, Sarah. I'm excited to chat. Yes. Okay. So for anybody who doesn't know you, can you just give me quick background? Who are you? Like, how did you start your business? How have things gone? All of that good stuff. Yeah. So uh, my name is Kenzie Harkey. I am the owner of Simply Dare, and we are a lifestyle and organizing company based here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Our mission is to really help people live better and easier by simplifying, organizing, and styling their homes. So we primarily work in home with clients. Um, We also do some virtual consulting here and there and some styling packages we offer too. We just started doing that recently. Um, And then another big thing that we do is help people with relocation. So if you are packing up and decluttering before a move or unpacking and organizing and want to set up some new systems for a new home, or maybe you've done a renovation and you need to have some support getting back settled, you know, into the new home, then that's what we love helping people with too. Awesome. Uh, So Kenzie also did my garage last summer. I think it was last August. And I have to say that that was this one space in my house. My husband was like, we are never going to be able to get this fixed. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) It's fixed. So I only have good things to say about Kenzie. Okay. So tell me about like, when did you start your business and just what was it like, you know, going from where you are, where you were back then to now? Yeah. So I like most people nowadays that are entrepreneurs started my business 
as a result of a layoff during the pandemic. So um, I was furloughed for about six weeks and I started to think of some side business ideas because I had already done enough personal development. And I was like, okay, got to find something else here. Um, just started brainstorming one day. I think I downloaded a printable from Career Contessa. It was so random. And I was just like sitting there on my dining room table, just brainstorming and somehow landed on professional organizing and had no idea it was an industry, but I've been organizing since I was born. So to me, it felt like the perfect fit because I could start it tomorrow, you know, the next day and start charging people for it. And I grew up around a small business. My dad and my grandpa um, ran a small business. My uncle runs it now. So I've always kind of been around that flexibility, that, you know, time freedom that, you know, you can benefit from as an entrepreneur. And I've always wanted to start my own thing or create my own brand. You know, back in the day when I was doing health coaching, I thought it would be health coaching or wellness blog. And that never really landed. I just was like, I don't know. It just not, nothing ever really felt like the right fit. And then it was just kind of like all the stars aligned at once. It was the right timing, good idea. And, you know, there was just no better time to start it. I honestly didn't know you used to be a health coach. Yep. <laughs> My master's is in public health and that's like what I went to school for. And, um, you know, I had some, I had some prior like work experience doing that. And then when I was laid off, I was actually doing marketing for wellness brands at a fortune 500 company. So it was kind of a mix of all, all the things that I was interested in. So yeah. a lot of it actually, you know, informed my marketing abilities, I guess, you know, in the early days of launching simply Dara, you know, I was like, okay, I've done social media before I've done this before. <laughs> so, well, I have a funny story for you. So back in the day when I was at Deloitte and I was just working hundred hour weeks, there was one of my friends was on our tax team and we were out there working on a client and we were dreaming about like, what would we do if we didn't, you know, weren't working at Deloitte anymore. And we were like, we want to be professional organizers. <laughs> I was really? like, well, because it never, it's so funny. It never occurred to me back then that I could do, use my CPA license in a way that would be like fun, you know? And so I was like, I don't ever want to go out and do tax returns for people. That sounds horrible, which to be fair, it still sounds like it's not what I want to spend all my time doing. And so we were like, we found that you could be, you could actually get like a certified organizer licenses or something, or there's like a training you could do. And I was like, I would so do that. But I laugh now because it's just like, that's so not, my brain does not work that way. You know, like for you to come out and do my garage in my house and have it laid out the way that it is. It's like, I never ever in my life could have done that. So I'm glad I didn't. And I'm glad that you did. So <laughs> I heard you say that, you know, as you were thinking about what to do next, you said you're thinking about like growing up around time freedom and like financial freedom and all of that. And so how long, or do you feel like you have gotten there, like time freedom wise, or like just that, that promise is there for all of us when we start our own business, like, oh, we have complete ownership of our schedules. Like what has been your experience with that? Honestly, for me, it's been fine so far. I take off when I want to, I don't take off a lot, but I do when I want to. <laughs> and just not having that red tape of, you know, going and asking a boss and getting it approved. It's just so fun for me to think, yeah, I want to take a Friday off at the end of every month and I'll just do it. And it's fine. Um, same thing goes with just normal life admin things that come up or doctor's appointments or things like that. I can work my schedule every week to benefit me. And that's what I think time freedom is. And of course I would want more in the future and hiring a team and having that support on hand has definitely helped, but it's a slow process and, you know, still in year two. So, um, and I really like working now <laughs> that I'm doing something I really love. You know, I might be working 50 or 60 hours a week and I'm like, well, it's not that bad, <laughs> but I'm definitely resting more this year, which was much needed because I burned out at the end of last year. So I'm, finding that balance now of both. Yeah. It's, it's so hard. I mean, I went through that, you know, like I went through that burnout phase and just working myself to death phase. And now I've finally, finally like gotten to the other side. I won't say completely have gotten to the other side, but it's definitely a process, right? 
Do you want to create more cash flow, put more money in your pocket, and demystify your business's finances and taxes once and for all? Since you're listening to my podcast, I'm pretty sure that you do. In order to create wealth and reach your goals, you have to understand your numbers and you have to intentionally manage your money so that you can understand what's actually generating profits in your business and what's not and make CEO level decisions about what to do next. So you can create a solid foundation that allows you to confidently grow and scale your business. If you're nodding along to everything I'm saying, then you need to join my 12 week profit and prosper group program. In this program, I teach my CFO framework for streamlining your financial systems, optimizing cash flow and growing a bulletproof business. I've got video modules, my exclusive templates and calculators, and best of all, 12 weeks of support directly from me, your personal CPA and virtual CFO. I only run this program a few times each year and the next cohort is officially open. It's time for you to get off the struggle bus and turn your money into the rocket fuel that propels you toward your goals. And I cannot wait to watch it happen. Go to profitandprosper.co forward slash join now to learn more and sign up. I feel like that promise is always there for when people start their business and they see people out there talking about like, oh, you know, look at me doing all these things, but then it's actually harder than you realize, I think, to achieve that. So, so tell me now you're in year two, right? And you just recently hired your first employee. I know you had contractors before that would help you on jobs, but now you have an employee. So talk to me about that. What does that look like? And what did it take for you to get to be able to do that? I never thought that I would hire employees or it would be such a far off thing that would happen. Um, but after talking to you, honestly, at the retreat and Karen, <laughs> I was influenced. Um, but I mean, you know, legally speaking, the tasks that I would want my lead organizer to do and to take over to truly grow the business and not just maintain it at a certain level with contractors that's an employee. So she's helping with a lot of the behind the scenes planning. She has started leading some projects on her own. Um, We're at the very end of training. So we've been really in depth with training for, you know, three months now, and we'll constantly, you know, be having, you know, monthly check-ins and, and, you know, even as a team, I want to, you know, kind of do that. I have a lot of plans for like how our team can collaborate more, but It's just been so helpful to have another brain to brainstorm with, to take care of things when I can't do things. Even this weekend, you know, she was working on some stuff and I was out having fun with friends and, you know, I'm still working on the same projects as she is, but that's time that I would have been working on the weekend and I don't have to do that anymore. And one of my big goals this year was to create breathing room in my schedule because I burned out last year. And um, yeah, so like I said, I've, I've had contractors, you know, a team of contractors pretty much since six months in, but you know, they're there for the job and on site work, but I really needed help for all the behind the scenes stuff because that still was bottlenecking through me. And to me, that wasn't fun. So now I feel like it's been more fun and more enjoyable, you know, being able to delegate to someone. Yeah. And you've just gotten started too. Like I will tell you from experience, it only gets better as they learn more and they take on more it only gets better. So I think it's interesting that you said you never thought you would hire an employee and it seemed like such a far away thing. And I just remember, I tell people this all the time. Most business owners start with contractors because it's more comfortable, right? You don't feel as like obligated to keep them on. You feel like, oh, if everything tanks next month, like I'm not totally screwed because I can just let them go. But with an employee, you feel more I guess, responsible, right? For their livelihood, which is true because you are. So I'm really curious, like what made you feel comfortable to make the jump from having contractors to now you have your first actual employee? Well, honestly, just working with you and not to even plug you at all, but (laughs) you really did 
break down a lot of the mindset issues that I had about it and the barriers to entry that I thought were there when they really weren't. I mean, yes, of course it is more expensive, but for me, it's a cost benefit analysis. If I can have them contributing more and doing more high level things within the business, then it negates that extra cost of paying their payroll taxes or paying the monthly payroll fee or what, you know, workers comp now, you know, there's little things like that. Yeah. Like as I was in the process, I thought, well, yeah, it is kind of adding up here and there. Um, going to have to get more merch for us soon and an extra work kit for her. Yeah. There's definitely investments that go into it, but for me, it outweighs the price that I pay to, you know, just do those things. I got such chills when you said that. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like a proud, like, I feel like, I don't know. I just got chills. That's proud, so good. Proud. Yay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, honestly, it is like there is a lot of like the mindset work too that goes in to hiring an employee. And I think it's that like fear of putting, putting, allowing like someone else in, right? As much as it is about like the increased cost and just all that goes with that. So, well, I think that's amazing. So, what do you think now? what has that opened up for you to be able to do? Like, what do you think you'll be able to do in 2022 that you couldn't do in 2021 now that you have that? So the biggest thing is that um, I'm working on a really in-depth and comprehensive training guide and manual for everyone. Um, There's so many other bigger projects that I like to take on. And I think I even told you when I was reflecting at the end of last year, when I was burning out, I really enjoyed the process of building the business. Like the first six months, everyone always says the first year is the hardest, but I thought it was the most fun. I mean, it's getting fun again, you know, now that I have that support and it's not all still just on me. Cause once you grow and then you're like, oh, I'm making sales, but now I have to do all this work. That's when you know there's a problem when you're not even excited about the sale anymore. So I'm definitely coming back to that, of you know, having more fun with it and everything, but I like doing the behind the scenes, like business stuff and the bigger like marketing projects or strategy. And a lot of organizers don't like, they really do like just being in the field and working with clients and keeping it very simple. And that's totally fine too. And I love that. I, I like to have the mix. So for me, the perfect hybrid would be popping in on some client appointments, you know, throughout the week, checking in on everyone, still being on the ground, because I do think I would not like seeing the clients, you know, like I would feel too disconnected, but being able to have that office time back would mean the world. And like I said, I just, it's not that I have shiny object syndrome. I'm, I'm, I think I'm getting over that now that I'm getting smarter as a business owner, but you know, I just get excited about all the behind the scenes stuff that you can do to grow the business, networking, doing, you know, PR marketing, all those other things. Um, or what I'm excited to have more time and space for and just to rest. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Well, I think that a lot of us have the shiny, I mean, I totally have shiny object syndrome and I'm like you too. Some business owners are fine doing the work. I actually had a call with somebody last week who was like, you know what? I don't know if I want to hire employees. I like doing the work. We just have to figure out like, that's a different model. And like, how do you make that more sustainable for you generally by charging a premium for your time, right? Versus what you've shifted into now is a different model, also totally okay, but also I think easier to grow beyond a certain point because you're not solely relying on you anymore. And I do do the same thing. I like to have, you know, touch points with clients, but I have been able to outsource this. The the day-to-day stuff for me is not as exciting anymore after you do it several times. And so, I mean, I'm, I'm exactly the same way. So, well, I think that's, I think it's so exciting. You've hired your first employee and I think you're just now even beginning to see the, the whole world is like opening back up to you. So I think to watch you kind of go through that period of like burnout and like, I don't even know I remember you saying like when we went to Lauren's retreat and for those of you listening, that's Lauren Widrick. She had a retreat last fall, I think last October and like watching you there just feeling like overwhelmed and I could just like see it when you talk about your business and I was there too, right? Like where I talk about like wanting to grow into these things, but it feels so heavy, right? And if it feels heavy, then it's going to be really hard for you to do. Right. And so we had to like create some space. So I think that's amazing. So let me ask you this. Your first, 
couple years of business, specifically with a twist of like finances, right? What was like the thing that surprised you the most? Like when you look back and you say, wow, that was like really hard for me, potentially, like what was something that we were like not expecting that you ran into? When it comes to finances Mm -hmm. or just business in general? Probably. I mean, the biggest thing that comes to mind for me is sales only because I never had sales experience with a job. All of my jobs were marketing or like behind the scenes support for a company, or, you know, I was doing more like health administration, public health things like in a hospital, you know, it's very medical, like background based or, you know, marketing. Um, so then whenever it came to selling things, I was like, oh, people don't just like know I exist and want to come buy our services. That's weird. (laughs) Um, because, you know, right when you first start your business, most of the time, if you, you know, market it well and promote it well, then you're going to get a big influx of clients right from the start. And it's easy to think, oh, this is easy. Like this, we're going to be great. And then for me personally, that was the, my experience. And then around like the six month mark after I, Uh, announced to everyone that I was in business, I hit a screeching halt. And January, from what I've learned, is more of a slow time for professional organizers. Um, And, you know, last January, February, March, were not my best sales months at all. So just being able to weather that storm and to keep my mindset positive and to keep doing things that are moving the business forward, I've always found things to do whenever, you know, I'm bored or like have office time. Like I'm never bored in my business, but I'm even like that in my personal life, people will get bored. And I'm like, I've got a long list of things that I could do. (laughs) I just, I never have enough time to do the things I want to do. So many books you want to read all these things. So same thing with business stuff. I just, you know, I've, and I've seen organizers talk in some communities that I'm a part of, and they're always asking, you know, some people are asking, you know, what do y'all do on your admin days? What do y'all do when you have office time? And I just don't know what that's like, because I just feel like I have so many ideas or so many things that I would love to do if I just had all the support in the world. So whenever I was slow, it was still nice because I was, like I said, working on the behind the scenes stuff. Um, of course, you know, wasn't making as much money, but I was able to have, you know, I obviously planned for that, right. With like savings and, um, the great thing about being fired or, you know, being laid off was I was able to draw unemployment for some weeks when I wouldn't make money. And, you know, that helped a lot. So just having that extra cash cushion there, um, you know, while I was going through those slow months in the beginning was everything. But as I was saying that, I think the mind mindset stuff is still like the hardest thing for me. And it's something I'm constantly working on. I've definitely improved, but you know, whenever you're going through really slow months like that, when you're starting a business and you're, you're vulnerably putting yourself online all the time and selling yourself and marketing yourself, you know, we're a personal service. So it's, it's, you know, me and my face on everything. And that can be, you know, you have to have a really good mindset to keep going for that. Yes. Okay. I was making notes over here. You said so many good things. So I want to touch on like your business. You said last January through March came to a screeching halt. Did that happen this year? Did you see a like sales decrease? Um, well, a little, it was a little slower in January. I will say like right in the beginning, cause I did take that week and a half off because I was burnt out. Right. So that was something I knew was going to happen. Um, and that was worth it. <laughs> Like it totally was, you know, I could have, and some organizers, it's just such a catch 22 because with the organizing world, you can shift your services in the holiday months and do holiday setup, breakdown, organize, and be busy through those months or, you know, through December or through the week between Christmas and new year's. But to me, that time off is so much more valuable. Like there is something sacred about that time between Christmas and new year's that I feel like everyone takes a break and everyone's resting. And it's just such a good reset for me. I love the first of everything. I love the first of the year, first of the month, first of the week, like a type A person through and through. So like, to me, it was worth it. I I said, you know, I know this is probably going to slow us down a little bit in January because I'm just not marketing. I'm not selling. I'm not doing anything, but I literally cannot (laughs) do it. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, so, I mean, knowing that that was coming, like, what did you do to plan ahead for that? And I ask because this is so common with businesses is to have those periods of like slower cash flow contraction, right? And that can be really tough for people to make it through if you don't plan appropriately. And so I'm just curious, like knowing that was coming, like, did you do anything ahead of time to set yourself up to, for success, right? As you made it through that, the slower time and taking time off and all of that. Yeah, I would say, you know, for me, I've always used the profit first method with my bank accounts, um, which I know you, you definitely support like a hybrid version of that. I had set that up last February and, um, you know, it was about six months into the business and I just knew I needed a good financial system to manage the money. Well, like I'm a pretty decent, you know, personal money manager, but at the same time, when it's, when it's a business on the line, like there's just so much more risk involved. So I'm like, I got to make sure I get this right. And for me, the separate bank accounts is everything. So I can easily look and say, okay, I've got X amount in my operating expense account. Well, what other big expenses do I have coming up this month? Our expenses aren't super high. You know, we keep it at a really reasonable rate for an organizing business. Even if we do have some tight months here and there, it's, it's not the end of the world because we don't have a ton of bills or anything. So, um, and again, to even just for my personal, you know, salary or owner's draw, like having that separate bank account for that and always, you know, putting money in there and only pulling out a select amount every single time. If we have a great month, I'm not pulling out more money from that. You know, I keep my salary or my owner's draw like the consistent because you never know. And you're like you said, you know, you're going to need that cash cushion every now and then. And, you know, I just am very mindful of that and like to just keep it consistent. Yes. <laughs> So I feel like 90% of new business owners that are come on as clients, they inevitably have one bank account for everything. And that's always one of the first things I tell them is like, even if we don't go full on profit first, right. With like the seven accounts or whatever it is that they tell you to get, I think having that like separate account to like specifically say, okay, I had a killer sales month. Like I'm going to put money to cover my future expenses and my future pay for me. And then taxes and a cash cushion so that as you go into like this season, you feel comfortable taking time off, knowing you're going to take a hit on your sales because at that time you didn't have a team member to keep things going. Right. So I think that's really key. And I think people think it's like, this is, it's almost like it's too easy to be like a real solution, you know, like they say, Oh, like real, like that's all I have to do. But like, honestly, it really is. So I think that's great that you did that. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask too, is like going back to mindset, your mindset around money impacts like everything that you do in business. Right. And so like, what do you think were some of the things that like came up for you, like in your first couple of years that you've had to specifically, like, I recognize I'm doing this and like, how can I move past that? In the beginning, I knew that I was going to charge low prices to get things going. I've never worked for free though. So even my friends and family, my grandma, I made, I made her pay me <laughs> like I, <laughs> because I just know I'm not going to be as, I'm not going to do my best work if I'm getting zero dollars for this. Like, even if I get some after photos, so there's definitely, you know, two debates on that topic, but for me, you know, my hourly rate in the beginning was like $40 an hour or something, you know, really low. Um, it's not just the organizing time though. And I think $40 an hour, you know, when you think of that number, oh, that's a pretty decent rate, but people forget about how much offsite time is going into all these projects, how much planning, sourcing, like errands, dropping donations off, even the constant like email communication calls, the, you know, all those things like add up to, you know, how much time and effort has been put into a project. And if it's going to be really good, then yeah, it takes some planning and to be pretty thorough with it. So we have steadily increased our prices, um, especially after I added team members, right? Because I've, of course I've got to pay them and I pay our contractors and team members a really good rate. So for me, getting over the fact that people would actually pay thousands of dollars for this service, like just cause I'm, you know, 30 years old and don't really have enough stuff to like pay someone for this service. Like 
realizing that there's actually people out there that have, yes. and even if you don't have a lot of stuff, we we actually have a project going on right now for a whole home and they are minimalists, but they don't have anything organized. And you know, that's what they've said. It's their words. So it's not even if you just have like a ton of stuff, right? Like we organize, you know, for clients who have things already pared down and they don't even really need to do a lot of editing and decluttering. So just realizing that people value this type of service and that everyone's brain doesn't think this way. And I think that's another thing too. And everyone always says like, when, you know, you've found the right job when, you know, it's so easy to you and everyone else will pay for it. But for me, I look at a space and I'm just like, yeah, this is what you would do. And people are like, oh, okay. Well, sounds like, you know what you're doing, you know? So just like <laughs> realizing that there is an expertise in this brain somewhere <laughs> when it comes to organizing and space solutions and all of that stuff. And even just, you know, in my past jobs, I did a lot of like project management, project coordination. And that's really what this job is at the end of the day and bringing in different, just networking, knowing other service providers that we can bring in to do like a full service project, all of that, you know, it, it takes a really organized person to be able to manage all that too. Um, but it's just, I think realizing that, yeah, this is something that people value it takes a lot of time to organize and to have it done the right way. And no one wants to spend their time doing that unless they love organizing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, just, just having that realization. Um, and even still, you know, to this day, like there's definitely things that, you know, I still have to like work through or, you know, whatever. Um, some, sometimes I wonder like if we're actually like <laughs> tracking all the time that we're spending behind the scenes, but, and, um, but yeah, it's, it's just been, cool, like working through those. Cause it affects your personal life too. You know, um, it's, you know, whatever issues or solutions you're trying to solve in business, you know, can be parlayed over to personal life too, which is pretty cool. Yes. Yeah. No, that's so true. I think a lot of our personal financial habits also bleed into our business financial habits. And so like I tell people, you'd probably be surprised. Like I am totally the type who will like buy all the things. That's just like my own, my own internal, like money mindset says like keep buying things. Cause that's like the solution. Right. And so I have to every day, like remember to reel myself in, even though I'm quote unquote, a numbers person, right. We all have these like habits and behaviors that we've created from the time we were kids, right. Like seeing how we were raised and actually on one of our coaching calls last fall, you said something that I was like, or you maybe wrote this in one of your like assignments. Um, and I was like, that's such a good way of putting it. But you said you were raised in a middle-class household. And so to get out of this mindset of like, we can't spend money on things like the services that you offer, like just getting out of that mindset, even because I was raised in a very middle-class household too. And it's not like we were like wanting for anything, but it also wasn't like, we don't buy luxury things. We don't go on really nice trips. We don't hire personal organizers to come do our garages, you know? And so like recognizing the, how that is impacting your business, I think is just so important, right? Because you're like, I'm not going to price myself high enough because I don't believe that anybody actually wants to pay me. And so like, bringing that to the forefront and then actively working to get past that, I think is amazing. So what are your future goals for your business? And like, where do you see it going in the next few years? And, you know, how do you feel like you're set up for success to like meet those goals? Right. Cause like, I know, I know it's like kind of what the answer is. Like, I know what your goals are. Cause we've talked about it, but I think it's super exciting if you're like comfortable sharing any of that. Yeah, I'll share vaguely. <laughs> So I would love to, by the end of the year, be set up to launch in another market. So that's the goal. Um, and then if that doesn't happen, probably doubling down on our team here in Charlotte and expanding the team so we can have, you know, almost like two separate teams that can go out and, you know, work two different projects in the same day. So we definitely have enough people on our team right now. Um, the beautiful thing about contracting with us is that it's such a flexible, like part-time schedule. So people usually, you know, my 
team members usually have other jobs going on. But, you know, if that were the case and I really wanted to stay in the Charlotte market and, and double down, then I would probably just be expanding and, and you know, figuring out who can, who can have more availability and, you know, be more on like a consistent, you know, work schedule. But I, you know, that's like the focus right now is, is the second market. Um, so that's why I'm being so, you know, thorough with all the training now and, you know, everything's documented, everything's recorded. Whenever I have a second lead organizer come on, it's going to be such a faster process because I've gone through all this with Jordan and we've really like fine tuned what she doesn't know, like what the gaps are, like what would be helpful. And that's the beautiful thing about hiring a team too. It's helped like streamline our processes so much and make them so much tighter and better. And just in general, like improving the client experience. Um, because like you said, it is that extra like responsibility or accountability. And once I have to explain to someone what my process is, it makes you consider how it could be better or faster mm -hmm. or whatever. So that's been like the unexpected benefit of training. And yes. it's get more fun. I found, <laughs> I found like saying it out loud sometimes made me realize just how ridiculous it was. Yeah. <laughs> and it made me realize like, wait, I'm been doing that and I expect someone else to do that like we need to rethink this so yes yeah so I think either way though like the goal is expansion in some form right and I guess like the point I want to get back to is like there's no right answer like you are not going to be more successful quote unquote than any other organizer that's out there it's just like what you want out of your business, right? Like you can also have a profitable business if you are the primary organizer and you charge a high rate and you have that premium model versus you've made the choice to be like a premium service and also expand and like building a team in the processes and things. And so I think that's really exciting though. Um, okay, so here's my last sort of question, if you have, we're looking back at Kinsey from, you know, a couple years ago, starting your business or talking to business owners who were like working on their first hundred K in revenue, like what advice would you give them in terms of like how to create, to get to this place where you are like able to pay yourself regularly, you're able to have your money set aside in your bank account, you're planning well, like you're hiring a team, like what, I don't know, just like, what's like one piece of advice that you would give to that person? I think my piece of advice is always like when I'm asked this question is to make the right investments. Because if I didn't make certain investments in my business, I don't think I would be where I am today. And I still don't even think I'm super successful. <laughs> Like, that's how critical I am. I'm just like, oh, the, there's definitely more to see here, uh, you know, in the future. I, I definitely feel like I'm still on the journey. But for me, making the right investments is huge because, you know, whether that's a course or even simply getting an Audible subscription and, you know, enjoying a nice, like, business book every month, you um, for me, audiobooks are huge, but you know, regular books like I, I love all reading and just learning because I've never, I never thought I would run a business. I thought business was so boring in college, which is why I always did medical and you know health stuff. But then, you know, as I got older, I've obviously like changed my mindset around that. But for me, it's fun just learning all the different things, all the different strategies that you can do to grow or maintain a business. You know, it's all like you said, it's not always about growth, but just learning how things can be done and seeing different perspectives. Because, you know, if I don't see someone else doing it or hear someone else doing it successfully a certain way or whatever, whether it's like you as a CPA or like a business coach, it doesn't have to be just like organizers, then I don't, I don't know it's possible. So, you know, just having that reassurance that, yeah, you can do this and be successful with this and you can be happy and enjoy your work and have flexibility and, you know, work with people that you want to work with. You know, that's another big thing. Like I'm, I'm making all these hiring decisions, <laughs> like, you know, like I'm not stuck in a job where I'm, you know, you're with coworkers that you didn't pick. And that was actually the big um, upset from getting laid off is my old coworkers. We all, we all really enjoyed working together and we actually still do happy hours every now and then, which is the best. So um, yeah, I think just making the right investments and knowing what you need to do to get yourself to that next step, because it's probably not going to be DIYing all of it. 
like you're going to have to pay for some expertise to fast forward your progress at some point. Um, and, you know, lately I haven't made a ton of investment. I mean, obviously, like I've been working with you, like with the course last year, but I don't think I've made many investments this year into growing because of, we've just been doubling down on the training. But, you know, when you know that you have like a knowledge gap and making sure you actually have implemented everything you've learned. And then if things still aren't working, you know, you just have to pay for things sometimes and, and invest in it to get you to that next level. And for me, it just gives me that peace of mind that I'm on the right track or I'm doing things the right way and I'm not missing something. Um, Cause when you, and usually when you invest in things like that, courses, programs, whatever, you're getting yourself involved with the community too, which is the biggest piece too. Like having business friends and then, you know, just learning from experts on the right way things should be done or learning different ways it can be done is huge. Yes. You said so many good things in that. I do agree. I think you, you can only get to a certain point, like DIYing it or getting like free content from people and all of that. Like there's just another level when you actually like put yourself out there and like make a real investment in something, because then you're like really putting your money and your time out on the line. And I also agree. I think my business can only go as high as I let it. Right. And if my mindset or my processes or my whatever is like going to hold my business back. I've got to identify that's the problem. And like, that's where you invest and investing can be time or money. So you say, I've not made any big investments so far in 2022, but I know you have spent a crap ton of time working on behind the scenes, training processes, and all of that. It is an investment. And I think that, you know, you're just choosing to like do that yourself instead of like hiring someone else out to do that. Right. So Um, I do think that's an investment, but yeah, I think identifying, like you knew your roadblock last year was probably not so much like the sales at the time it was creating space for you. And so how do you do that? Right. And how do you get to a place where you can finally hire a team member to then create the space for you to even be able to do more stuff. So I think just like knowing, like, you don't have to invest in all the things all the time, but like, this is, these were the key parts for you. And now you've addressed those and it probably in the near future, I would expect will open up. This is the new roadblock, right? Like now I've unblocked this part over here on the back end. Now, like let's turn back to sales or marketing, right? And you've created the space to do that. So, okay. And then you said one other thing too. And I want to ask, you said you're very critical of yourself and you don't feel like you're very successful. And so I'm going to ask you like quickly, what is one thing you are proud of that you think you have done really well in your business? I would like to think that I've created a good culture with our team, <laughs> but I also, I'm, I've, I am proud that we've remained profitable since day one. So that's something that, you know, this business, it's a small business, it's bootstrapped. Like there's, it's not like the next startup, like getting outside investment or anything like that. But just being able to bootstrap a business of your own and make it profitable. And I've always kept the same salary that I had in corporate. Um, I've slowly now started to increase my salary and that's been exciting. But, you know, I think when you are getting paid a maybe relatively low amount compared to other people to still work 60 hours a week, you know, when I think about the actually the hourly rate that I'm getting <laughs> um, and knowing that. I'm still happy to do it and still do it and love doing it. I feel like that's when, you know, um, so I'm definitely proud of doing it right. And finding something that I enjoy that pays my bills and allows me time freedom. Um, and it's just, you know, like you said, it's just going to get better. Um, so I'm definitely, you know, in those ways I am successful, but yeah, I always think that I have to get to like the end before I can be successful. (laughs) No, we've got to enjoy it along the way. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So my last question, I just decided I'm going to make this a thing and ask everybody. This is my favorite question to ask people. What is like the one thing that you would buy that you would consider to be an extravagant or luxurious or whatever when you are able to like afford that, you know, like what, how do you like celebrate like I've reached like financial success in my business. Like what's the one thing now that you would buy that you would look at, look at now and think like, 
that's extravagant. You know, what would you do? Oh, G wagon, hundred <laughs> percent. We've talked about this. Yes. <laughs> I am a very practical car person. I don't really care about cars. I just want it to be reliable, clean, you know, like look nice. Like as far as like not having rust, you know, all over the car, or anything like that. Um, yeah, I drive a Honda Accord. It's, it's fine. I love my Honda Accord. Actually, it's very spacious. Um, it has some really cool features that I'm very proud of. It's like seven years old. Actually, it's nine years old. But if money was no object, and once I get to the point where I'm, you know, making a lot of money, um, yeah, I would love to spoil myself with a G wagon. I fantasize about it. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I like to. I want. I love to ask people that question because I think, especially for women, we tend to not want to spend money on ourselves in that way, or we feel this resistance, right? Of like you know, like everybody, I feel like everybody knows, like my, my version of that is like the lake house. Right. So like the idea of like, when I picture myself, like actually doing that, like when I first thought of it, it was sort of this like scary thing of like, I feel like such an imposter, you know, like I'm never going to be able to do that. But now the more that I socialize that with myself, I feel like the more that I become that person who's like, I'm going to make money. I'm going to be successful. And I'm also going to help people while do while I'm at it. And I'm going to celebrate myself by buying a lake house and a boat, or in your case, a G wagon. <laughs> and I'm with you. I drive a 2007 Honda Accord right now. So would it like 14 year old car? Like I'm with you. Like one day, I don't know. I may buy the lake house before I upgrade my car though. We'll see. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Well, this was so fun. And, you know, I, I hope that everybody listening gets some good inspiration and just seeing like someone else who I would say like, yes, we always have goals. We always have new things we want to do, but like someone else who has done it and made it through and like, can show you this is what's possible for you. So I so appreciate you coming on and like sharing all of this. And I actually keep thinking to myself, like, I need to tell you to get on your list to come do my kitchen because that's now driving me nuts. So <laughs> when I did a poll on my Instagram last week, I was asking, I'm just always curious what people's thoughts are on these things. So I do polls all the time, but you know, what space in your house would you like, do you feel like needs to be organized, you know, over anything else? And it was an overwhelming majority that said kitchen. <laughs> it just makes- must be the time of year, right? Like, I don't know, but I've got to get on the list somehow. So, <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, Kenzie. I, I know I'll see you around. Thank you, Sarah. This was so fun. Thanks for listening to this week's episode. Now, I want you to go take some action. What's one thing you can do this week to create more profit in your business? Send me a DM on Instagram at youngcocfo and share your action item with me. If you have a question or topic you'd like me to dive into, or if you're feeling empowered about taking charge of your finances, let's continue the conversation. Go to profitandprosper.co to submit a question or topic for me to talk about on the show. And because we all profit and prosper better with friends, please leave me a review on Apple Podcasts, subscribe wherever you listen, and share the episode. Make sure you tag me at youngcocfo on Instagram so I can give you some love, and I'll see you in the next episode.